The National Broadcasting Company presents Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 7. Attraction 7 on Radio City Playhouse is an experiment in laughter. The story of Fanny, a very unusual and fabulous old lady. The script is written by our director, Harry W. Duncan, and stars the young American comedian, Grace Ketty. Here then, with our best wishes for a chuckle or two, is Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 7, Fanny. <laughs> Fanny is 69 years old, which is almost 70. Fanny is worth $69 million, which is almost indecent. And Fanny is bored, very, very bored, which is almost incomprehensible. In Hill City, Fanny Mottrin is considered a character. She lives in a house that compares favorably with Buckingham Palace, and local rumor has it that her bath towels are made to order from a Canadian ranch mink. She believes that her age and her money will allow her to do anything, and frankly, well, they do. This morning, for some unaccountable reason, she feels an intense and primitive urge to be nasty, as nasty as possible to anybody. So, when her doorbell rings... A gleam appears in her sharp old eyes, and brushing her butler aside, she answers the door herself. Listen, Sonny, my husband's ashes are in here in the mantle in an urn. The way you're ringing that doorbell, I bet you even disturbed him. Uh, uh, um, well, I, I'm sorry, I didn't. Ah, uh, stand to... up straight. What? Are you deep or a bit off your noodle? Uh, I, I don't quite know. What do you but... want? Um. Is, uh, is Mrs. Mottran in? That's me. If you got anything to sell, I don't want it. I'm the piano tuner, Pierce Pianos. You telephoned, didn't you? A piano tuner? <laughs> you think a well-set-up young fellow like you could find something better to do than tune pianos? What is this? And you wear a tie. Come in. What? Come in, come in. In here. Hmm. Holy smoke. What is this, a museum? Meaning what? Uh, uh, nothing. We don't slouch and pull your stomach in. Were you in the army? Now look, Mrs. Mottman, I, I, I don't know what's the matter with you today. Maybe you're always like this, so I'll just give you all the information. I'm Joe Kirkland. I'm 24. I was in the Marines. I, I was wounded twice. I'm working for Pierce and Company half-time, and the rest of the time I, I study piano. My parents went to the Methodist church. They were fine people. They're both dead, and I'm here to tune your piano and not to have a row. <laughs> a piano tuner. And just what's wrong with that? Eh, I don't like musicians. They're fancy. Huh. No hair in their chest. Yeah, would you like to see mine? Well, if you're so smart, play something. I bet you're lousy. I'm darned if I don't think you're doing this on purpose. Do as you're told. Look, Mrs. Mottran, my price for tuning pianos is $10. For a recital, it's, it's higher. How much? Well, uh, uh, a hundred dollars. The deal. What? Hand me my purse. Besides, you're stupid. Uh, yeah, but... Don't you know a purse when you uh, see one? Uh, here. Yeah, thanks. Let me see. Yeah. Here you are. A hundred dollars? Are you serious? <laughs> I kind of like your face, Joe. You're fresh, but that's good. I like young fellows with spirit, especially orphans. William was an orphan. That's my husband, rest his soul. He's up in heaven now. Oh. He'll be bossing everything, but that's where he'll be. <clears throat> now, you play something real good, and maybe I'll have a proposition to make. Yeah, but I, I, um... Uh... Well, what's the matter? Can't you rip off something for a hundred bucks? Well, I... Uh, Mrs. Martin, for a hundred bucks, I'd rip off my right foot and boil it. You know Rachmaninoff's prelude? Uh, yes, I think so. And play it. And real fast. I like things that are fast. Okay. Ah, that ain't it. Bet you don't even know it. How much? Another hundred. Mrs. Martin, 
you have just tossed 200 bucks down the drain. been keeping your part of the bargain. Oh, I'm beat. That's nine hours today. Here's your first week's pay. Oh, Mrs. Martin, are you sure that you, you want to do this? We made a bargain, yeah, didn't but we? you're putting up the money, and, well, I feel Joey, that... you any idea what 50 bucks a week means to me? <laughs> like a raindrop in the Atlantic. 50? It was supposed to be 40. 40's all I got from the piano company. Gave you a raise. Oh, but Mrs. Martin, I, I just Joe, can't let you... Joe, I got between six. And seventy million dollars. Se- seven, seventy million. So for God's sake, stop splashing your tongue out over fifty bucks a week. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't even spitting money. <laughs> you stick to the bargain I asked you for, and I'll put up the green stuff. You work for two years of that darn piano. Live here with me, and if you ain't the best go- piano player in the country, you got to go to work in my oil business. Okay. Okay. And no more of this Mrs. Mutton stuff. We're partners, so it's Fanny and Joe, okay? Okay, Fanny. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Woo! 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 Hounded finger. Ah, it is so beautiful, Madame Fanny. Hi. Yeah, madam. Oh, Joey, would you please be a good boy and wait in the car for me on account? I just got to have a talk with madam about something private. Well, sure, Fanny. Au revoir, Joey. Au revoir. Bye, madam. See you Thursday. Oui, oui, Thursday. Uh, want to talk to you, madam. Oh, light somewhere and stop fluttering. <laughs> Maybe, sir, sure, madame Fanny. Sit down, sit down. I ain't got that much to say. How's the kid doing? Oh, it is so sad. Oh, no good, eh? No good. Oh, jeez. Money Come on, old. Come on, what? Like the angel he plays. Oh, you mean he's okay. Madame Fanny, he is the artist. The great artist. Everything I know, I have teach him. Eh bien, it is over. <laughs> Madame, for someone who don't talk American, you're okay. Oh, Madame, vous êtes trop gentil. Hey, you won't be seeing Joe again, but I'd like you to accept little present. Here. <sighs> the envelope. So excited. Merci. Mon Dieu, a thousand, a thousand dollars. Oh, dear, dear, Madame Fanny, you are the most good kid. So long, Madame. Listen, girlie. This is Mrs. William Mottron speaking. I don't believe in holding the line. Can I get two tickets to fly to New York tonight at 9 o'clock or can't I? Huh? Listen, I don't care about flight schedules. I want an airy plane at 9 o'clock, see? What? There isn't a plane at 9 o'clock. <laughs> well, there is now, girlie. Just let me talk to... Uh, uh, say, who does own that airport? <laughs> But, madam, you didn't have a reservation. Don't believe in him. I said I don't believe in him. Well, in that case, madam, you must Look, I'm staying at this hotel, and I'll boil you in biscuit batter. Madam, please. You using perfume, Sonny. I beg your pardon. Yes, stink. Madam, I... You must moderate your language. I'll moderate you, you moose. I'll buy the joint, that's what. There's 5,000 bucks. Yeah, take a look. There's thousand-dollar bills. Oh, good. Home for you. I want the top floor of this joint with a nice bedroom for each of us. And a studio for my young friend to practice the piano in. Oh, 
send up a piano, too. And if I have to wait five more seconds, I lose my temper and buy oh, the my, joint. My, oh, my. Oh, goodness, goodness. Front boy, front boy. <laughs> Help you, madam. Yeah, just stinking looking furniture department, but maybe you can. Just what was madam looking for? Service! No lip from you, mule head! Oh, madam, Shut I... up! Where can we sit down? I beg your pardon. Why? And stop shaking. Stand up straight and look a body in the eye. You nervous. Madam, I, I... sat here, you sit there. Yes, madam. Bought a house yesterday. It's new, no furniture. And I want some. Living in a hotel for six months. I want a house. Well, we we certainly be glad to do anything you can. You'll do everything you can, not anything you can. Yes, madam. Here's twenty thousand dollar bills. Count them. <gasps> There's thousand dollar bills. Twenty of them. <laughs> madam, I, I think I'd better bring the manager over and Get see. Sit down. Yes, madam. Don't need the manager. Want this house fixed up by tonight at six o'clock. Tonight. Why not? But, 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 madam, I, I, I mean, nobody ever expects to have Listen, a... Listen, tit mouse. Five thousand of that's for you. There's fifteen thousand left. Hire some men. Get as many people as you need to give you a hand with it. I want this place furnished from breakfast to britches. Fix it up for me. <laughs> madam, I just don't understand Here's another why... thousand. For six thousand bucks, you can't understand. No, but, but I'm sure I Get will. Get a thousand more if you do a good job. Get as many people as you need. And I want two stoves. Two? An electric for cooking and a cook stove for baking bread. Oh, yes. And the best piano you got. I'm aiming to sleep in that house tonight. But, but, but Madam Stace, I have no idea that the... Uh, Ain't could... it the truth? Never mind about the taste. I just want nice, comfy furniture. Don't care much about color. Get some victuals. Oh, yes. Ten cases of beer. Clear? <laughs> Clear beer. Can't you stop shaking? It's just one day. I, I getting it done in one day. I... Of all the drooly tug ninnies I ever seen, you're it. Can you, can't you? Maybe I better talk to the owner of this joint. What's his name? Gimble? <laughs> You're certainly a rip snorter. Sure is snappy piano playing. Well, <laughs> snappy isn't quite the word. But honestly, Fanny, it, it, it's not bad. I think I'm ready. For uh, what you said? Sure, debut. Yeah, Fanny, I think I am. We've been nearly a year in this house. I think it's time to, to come out into the open. Good. What about Madison Square Garden? Oh, Fanny, honestly. Well, it's big anyway. No, no, it's, it's Carnegie Hall. That Carnegie Hall, I want to rent the joint for two weeks from Monday. Huh? I just want to rent the place, that's all. Yeah, two weeks from Monday. Look, Sonny, this is Mrs. William Mottron, see? If there's any talking over to be done, you'll come up and see me. And what about the Monday after that? Horowitz. What's he do? Oh, he does, eh? Well, wait till you hear Joe. How about uh, September the 13th? New York Philharmonic. Uh, you sold any tickets for it yet? Box office opens tomorrow. <laughs> well, don't bother. I'll buy them all. We'll give the orchestra a holiday. You don't have to understand. I'll buy all the tickets and we'll send the orchestra home. I'll be down to see you in the morning. But just remember that my young friend's making his beauty in Carnegie Hall on September the 13th if I have to buy the joint. <laughs>
did it, Fanny. Fanny, we did it. Oh, you dirty monster. Oh, wow, Joey. Oh, wow. Knock some cold. Now get out there again and bow. Okay, what Fanny. Fanny, we're in. We're in. We did it. Mm, listen to him. Now, for instance, how you ripped that can in half. I knew it to split myself. Are you going to bow again? Oh, no, no. That's enough. Ah, oh, then come on. You and me's going out to get tanked up. Coffee, Fanny? Uh, shut up. <laughs> Hang over? Oh, I'm dying, Joe. <laughs> dying. <laughs> this four old oysters in me tummy, mewling and whimpering. Oh, what a night. Oh, what a life. Gosh, Fanny, I feel swell. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Here, try to eat some breakfast. Have a nice poached day. Oh, Joe, for Pete's sake, please. Oh, the reviews are swell. Wonderful. Oh. One of them ain't so good. This fella down. Oh. See him? No, oh, what'd he say? Well, here, read it. Right at the top of the column, see? That's the bad part. Only on rare occasions in the list sonata were Mr. Kirkland's fingers and his musical sense completely on report. Uh. However, it must be remembered that this young artist has not yet reached full musical maturity. He's right, too. And I don't like it, though. Him saying that. Oh, Fanny, don't be silly. Don's a brilliant man. The New York Times uh. wouldn't employ him if he wasn't. He knows. Oh, and he's right. Go on upstairs and shave. Let the body have breakfast in peace. <laughs> All right. Now, don't forget we've got a luncheon date with your aunt. Don't want to be late. Mm, down, Jay. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Hello? Hello, New York Times. Say, girly. Just who does uh, own the New York Times? Joe, I'm going shopping. You want anything? No, Fanny. Say, uh, Joey. Minute, will you? What is it, Fanny? You ever thought about getting married? Uh, now, what in the world brought this on? Yeah, I've been thinking. I don't like the thought of you being a virtuoso. Your age. So? Wife would do your good. Now, Fanny, there's to be none of that, understand? Yeah, nice, pretty young girl. Some girl works for a living. Uh huh. Don't like these fancy artist friends. Oh. No. Don't like the women. No chest hot or tall. Fanny, if you pull anything romantic on me, so help me out, I'll go back to Hill City and tune pianos. Now, I mean it. Okay, okay. I wouldn't think of interfering with your private life. Oh, now, where the devil does a body start looking for a nice working girl in this town? for you, lady? You like them bracelets? They're cute. Saints preserve me. How do you do, madam? May I show you something? Dearly, it's better concealed. Why, ma'am, you mean you really want a hundred yards of garden hose? Ah, skip it. You're too old anyway. Them teeth of yours real, dearie. Madam, please. That means they ain't. Uh, that figure of yours, uh, the real thing, girly. The Floridora buzz off. Ha! <laughs> Cammy flash. The 
violets are lovely, aren't they? May I pin them on your coat? Oh, that'd be real nice of you, dearie. Well, don't use perfume, do you? <laughs> In the flower department? No, there's no competition for roses. Oh, no, that's real sweet. What's your name, dearie? June Carly. Smile for me, dearie. <laughs> Them real teeth? <laughs> sure they are. Yeah, you're a right pretty child. <laughs> you're sweet, too. Uh, that'll be 50 cents for the violet. Uh, how about some roses? Oh, we have some lovely ones. Uh, just over there. Uh, you, uh, healthy, dearie? I'll tell you a secret. Eh? If I felt any better, I'd... Well, I'd bust. <laughs> eh, no, just how that is. Feel that way myself, and I'm near 70. Yeah, you're sure a lovely child. You, uh, engaged or anything? No, not yet. Okay, I'll take a dozen roses. Uh, don't mind me asking all these personal questions, but I wondered how it was a pretty girl like you wasn't married. Well, I'm just waiting for the right boy. Oh, uh, better make it two dozen roses. Certainly. And, uh, girlie, what's your address? My address? Yeah, what is it? Well, it's 550 East 96th Street. Carling, 550 East 96th Street. You live with your folks? Just my mother. She ain't divorced, is she? Oh, no. My father was killed in the war. Oh. A hero's daughter. Pardon? Uh, nothing, nothing. Oh, and dearie, one thing more. Has there ever been any insanity in your family? Sure, Fanny. Oh, uh, this is Mrs. Carling, uh, my young friend, Joe Kirkland. Mrs. Carling? How do you do, Mr. Kirkland? Come in, dearie. Don't be shy. Uh, Joe, this is Miss June Carling. Uh, June, this is Joey. Hello, Mr. Kirkland. Well. Uh, well, how do you do? I've heard a lot about you. Yeah. Mrs. Martin. Oh, you have? Fanny, it seems to uh, me I told you that... We won't be disturbing you, Joe. Go on with your practice, and we'll be having some early supper downstairs. Yes, but And I... then Mrs. Carling and June and me is going to prayer meeting. Nice to have met you, Miss Kirkland. Bye, Miss Kirkland. Fanny, uh, can I speak you to you for a moment? Go on with your practice, and Joe. We won't disturb you. Come on, Joe. Oh, goodbye. I guess I might as well come to prayer meeting, too. we'd run up to the corner movie. Wouldn't you like to come? No. Ah, oh, come on, Fanny. No. Something bothering you, Fanny? Ah, shut up. Both of you leave me alone. Fanny, what's the matter? I'm going back to Hill City. Y you're what? You and June have this nice little house to each other. You don't need me. Fanny. Young folks should be alone. You don't need me. As I've told you, I've settled 10000 a year on you. And so now I bear moose. Oh, she's serious. We'll stay home. Give me your coat. No, you won't stay home. Go on to the g movie. Kiss me. <laughs> Fanny. Don't need me anymore. Joe's a big shot pianist. Famous. Making his own money. I'm going back to Hill City with my guard. But Fanny... Let me handle this, Joe. Fanny. Fanny. What? Let me whisper something. What? Well. <gasps> yeah. Honest. When? In January. <laughs> well, now, say, that's real sweet. Real sweet. Young folks should have kids. Lots and lots so of them. So you see, we need you terribly. How could I manage the baby and everything if you weren't here? Oh, Fanny, you can't leave now. You just can't. Well, of course I wouldn't want to leave you in the lurch, should not you? Well, I should hope not. What hospital are you going to? Medical center, if I can get in. 
Meaning? They're booked up so far ahead. They, they didn't think they could take me unless there's a cancellation. How can you have a cancellation if you're having a baby? Well, sometimes things happen, then. Oh, my gosh. Oh, goodness. Uh, medical center, eh? <laughs> well, you kids get to the movie. Are you sure you won't count? No, but I'm sitting here. Go on, go on. We'll be back early. About 11 o'clock. Well, mind you do. You should be getting lots of sleep. Bye, Fanny. Bye. Uh, Let me see. Uh, I'll never get used to these certain New York telephone numbers. Uh, hello? Hello? Yes. Uh, say, girly, just who does own this here medical center? <laughs> That was Attraction 7 on Radio City Playhouse. The story of Fanny, as written and directed by Harry W. Duncan. Fanny was played by Grace Keddy. Joel was Joel Marston. Other players included Connie Lemke, Larry Gates, Elaine Ross, Mildred Clinton, and Anne Petoniak. The special music was composed and conducted by Dr. Roy Shield with Joe Kahn at the piano. Radio City Playhouse is supervised for the National Broadcasting Company by Richard P. McDonough. August 23rd, the day after tomorrow, Radio City Playhouse will be heard over most of these stations on Monday evenings, 10.30 to 11 o'clock. Now, due to many, many requests, our first offering in this new time will be a repeat performance of Long Distance by Harry W. Duncan. The challenging role of Mrs. Leon Jacks will again be played by Jan Miner. So be with us then on Monday, August 23rd, 10.30 p.m. for a repeat performance of Long Distance by Harry W. Duncan. That's Attraction 8, Radio City Playhouse. Warren speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.